how to make this poster right here. Um, this was poster 196. I'm currently doing the poster day for the next year. And um, I have about 160 something left to go. Um, so this is a poster I made last week and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So essentially you first want to open up a new Photoshop document. Um, and here it is, you can do it eight and a half by 11 or whatever size you want. Instagram size is like 1080 by 1080. Um, so you can use that. Uh, for this one, I'm using eight and a half by 11. Make sure the resolution is 300 and the color mode should be RGB. Now, if you decide you want to print, you can change it to CMYK here, but I can show you how to do that later. Um, make sure you have white background and you press create. I already have mine, so this is what mine looks like. I'm going to make the background white. So I'm going to use my brush right here, a paint bucket tool right here. I'm going to color it white. All right, so I found this image online of this African-American guy. And I had the idea of using something else as his hair. And so what I did was I went online and I found, um, oops, I found this. I found this fin. I believe it's a sesame fishtail. I found that online. I love the colors. And so, yeah. So now I'm going to show you guys how I did all of that. So I have this picture of this guy here. I'm going to go to my quick selection tool. I'm going to click on my select and mask. Um, um, and so I like to have my mine on overlay. So you can pick whatever color you want and reduce the opacity a little bit. So I'm going to pick red. All right. So. The reason I have the overlay is because it, it shows me what my picture actually, what I'm actually selecting. So as I select the image, I'm actually seeing the guy. All right, so here I am selecting the guy. And it's pretty much selected. Now there's this call, there's this tool called the Edge Refine Brush Tool. And what that does, oops, no. This is not supposed to happen. Give me a quick second here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to select the guy here. And I have pretty much selected him. Now there's this tool called the Edge Refine Brush Tool. Essentially what it does is that it helps take away the particles between his hair. All right, so that it looks more seamless and more realistic. So I'm going to put that around his hair. And if you look closely, it is taking it away, but it is also picking up his hair. All right, so that's what I use to kind of make my selection seamless. All right, so I think this should work. Okay, so when you're done, press OK. Um, actually, hold on really quickly. Back here, make sure it says output to selection. And you press OK. So it's going to output what you just did to a selection. So make sure you still have your quick selection tool clicked. Right click and say layer via cut or layer via copy. I like layer via copy because it always keeps the original for me in case I mess up. So here we have the guy. All right. Looks nice. And yeah, I like it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing to take this out of the picture. And this should be pretty easy. Make sure you click on the layer right here. Click on your select and mask. Select this. It should be pretty easy to select. Okay. 
Hey guys, I'm working on the tutorial as promised. I'll be releasing this this evening, so stay tuned. All right, so now that we have this, what I like to do is I like to use the uh, edge control tool as well, edge refine. I like to use the edge refine brush tool just to take away any artifacts that might be on the fin. All right. And so when I'm done, you pr I press OK. Now it's selected it, I right click and say later via copy and I hide this layer as well. So now you have the guy and you have the fin. Now if I hold down Command T, I am able to Now if I hold down Command T, I am able to move him, I mean to move the fin around his head. Now it's all about placement. I kind of knew what I wanted in the beginning, so I am making sure that I am moving everything correctly. And there we go. Him, I mean to move the fan around his head. Now it's all about placement. I kind of knew what I wanted in the beginning, so I am making sure that I am. Now if I hold down Command T, I'm able to move him. So now I am moving this around trying to make sure that it fits him perfectly. And I kind of like the way it is right now. It hides his beard right here. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a layer, a copy of this. So you can right click and say duplicate layer, or you can press Command J, it does not matter. So here's my second copy, and I'm going to make it smaller because I want this to be his beard, right? And here, I want it to look realistic. Right. So right now, as you can see, this is on top of this and it does not really look realistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a layer mask right here on this layer so that I can hide. Um, so, so that I can hide this part right here. So here I am hiding this part. OK, now it still doesn't look too real. So another thing I could do is make sure that this layer is right under this one, right? So now, so now I can use, I can put this under this layer. So this is what it looks like right now. It doesn't look realistic. So I'm going to drag this and put this under this layer. Now we're getting somewhere. However, I feel there needs to be some type of shadow here, right? So I'm going to make a new layer. Okay, I'm going to put this layer under this one, under the hair. And essentially, I'm going to hold down command and click on this thumbnail. And if you look closely, you get some marching ants behind this thumbnail. And so what I'm going to do is right click and say select inverse. So it's going to select everything except this fin. And I do this so that right now when I am using my black brush to kind of add the shadow, you can kind of see it. All right. So you have to be precise with this. Um, doing this has really taught me how shadows work, All right? So I have my shadow right here. I have another one come right, right about here. Okay, make this smaller. This is the harder way to do it. Um, but I know a lot of you guys are beginners, so I'm just going to do it this way. All right. 
So all I'm doing is using a black black brush to kind of give a fake shadow. And I'm using the I'm using the uh, I'm using the bracket tools to make this bigger or smaller. All right, that helps a lot. So I'm almost done with this here. All right, now it looks. I pressed Command D to take away the selection. Now it looks too much, so what you can do is you can actually just take the opacity down a little bit. And so now you kind of have a sort of fake shadow on there. Okay. The other way to do this, the harder way, I mean the easier way, is to make a copy of this layer and say duplicate layer, press OK, and um, put this layer under the main one. Right here where it says FX, click on color overlay and make the color black. So now it means you have a black have a complete black um, shadow. Now the issue with this is that it does it for the whole thing. However, you can use layer masks. I love layer masks because what it does is that it hides stuff. So black reveals, I mean black conceals and white reveals. So with the black, think of turning the lights off. You start to hide things, right? You can't really see things when the lights are turned off. Right? And let's say I messed up and I wanted to bring it back, I can just use white. And make sure you always click on the layer mask right there. So that is this is the other way to do it. Um, I am going to hide part of this. I'm going to hide this part as well. All right, and then I can reduce the opacity as well. All right, that's just another way to add that. I actually like this better. So now that we're done. I'm going to group these, actually no, yeah, I'm going to group all of these together. So I clicked on the first one, I press down shift, click on the last one, hold down shift and click on the folder. And I'm just going to call this fins. And now I'm going to go to my hue and saturation. And I love this because it, it allows me to change the color. Um, now I don't want to affect the guy, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this. So if you hold down alt, you can clip this into this group so that means it only affects that group it doesn't affect the whole image right so now I remember what I wrote down for my last colors I think it was 24 positive 24 and then I made another one and clipped it and it was negative 28 and that's kinda how I got this kinda orangey bluish yellowish color and to make everything even look better, I made the made the background black. Okay, so I'm gonna make this black. All right, and here we are. Here is our person. Now, uh, let me see. So I also made the guy black and white. So I'm gonna click on the guy, and I'm gonna click on the black and white filter, and I'm gonna make him a little darker. Right, so not too dark, but dark enough where the focus is really on the fins. All right, and here we go. Here we have it. This is pretty much the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I hope this helps. Bye and God bless. Tammy Coker out.